3D season is here. Actually did not go to fully for the first ASA of the year um, because I've just had too much going on and I didn't even have my bow set up. So how could I go without even my bow set up? This is exactly what I ran in Vegas. Uh, title 38. I forget if I had the 38 or the 36. Um, but what we're going to do today is we are going to get a sight tape, shoot 3D a little bit, and I'm just going to kind of run through what I have been doing the past couple years as my setup. And uh, I'm not a like super well-renowned 3D guy, but I feel like I'm just getting the hang of it these past couple tournaments, especially what I've been to. Two years ago, I really went on a rant and did like almost all the ASAs of every single one. I kept doing better and better and better. Um, 3Ds, especially competitive ASA scoring rings, um, you have to put the time in to actually shoot the targets, shoot the tournaments, learn. It's not just like you cannot, I mean, this goes with anything, but you cannot just like shoot good in your backyard and then go out there and do good. It's a little more strategy behind it um, and just situational, just situational stuff. So I guess let's go over real quick. Oh, I do need to put back in a clarifier, but I don't have. Um, see if you can zoom in good on this. So I'm running uh, UltraView's smallest green dot. And on targets when, uh, like light targets, tan targets or sunny targets, I don't turn the light on. But then I turn the light on for the dark, uh, dark targets and it makes it look like if it was a fiber. Um, so that's kind of what I've been running. It looks black against targets that are super bright for you know tan colors, cinnamon bear or whatever. Um, and then bright green for everything else that you need it on. So kind of different. I know a lot of guys don't use like a dot for 3D, um, but this little green dot with the UV3 light and everything, it does work really good. And it's just about the right size. I am running a five power doublet lens from UltraView. And then what I do need to put back in, I took it out for Vegas. I don't like shooting indoor with the clarifier. I like the blurriness, but a clarifier, um, I need to put in, for those that don't know what a clarifier is, it makes your target clearer and your pin less clear. There's a scale, so if you did the, the lowest clarifier, your pin would still be pretty clear and your target would be semi-clear. And then next step, you know, target a little clearer, reticle not as clear, and then, I mean, you go all the way down to where you can barely see your dot, but it's as if you got a 10 pair of binos on the target and you can see it. <clears throat> so it's just sacrifice one way or to another. I think what I was running, I have to, have to find it. Ah, gosh, I think I was running a B clarifier, which is right kind of middle road. It's either running a B or an, oh, there it is right there. I'm gonna get that. That's a little clarifier. Your IB or just an A, which A is, is the least, or maybe it's A plus. What is this? This is A plus. So that would be, I think that's a little bit stronger, like it would make the target a little clearer than, uh, than just a regular A, I think. And then, yeah, this guy, this is a C. I cannot run a C. A C is way too clear for me. Cannot do that. So I guess let me, I'll do an A plus. I forget exactly what it is. So this will be a little experiment too along the way. Punch these bad boys back in. And I'll leave them inside so I'm not tempted to uh, change them out in the grass because I don't know how many times I have lost little tiny clarifiers because I thought it was a great idea to change them in the grass and then I drop them. I need a bigger one than that. There we go. No? Is there even one in there? Yeah, there is. Hold on. There we go. Okay. That is why I don't change them in the grass. <laughs> oh, goodness. Now the scavenger hunt to find that. It's best is honestly set it on the stabilizer. We'll drop this clarifier down in there. Make sure it's sitting just perfectly. Drop that back in. I think I'm running not a super, super small peep, but a pretty small one. Okay, so we got our clarifier in now. We got our sight set up. 
Got a bow set up. I forget how many pounds I'm shooting. I guess I could shoot through the chrono too real quick. Sixty-one pounds. I'm going to try to shoot it with the arrow that I was shooting Vegas with, the VTAX 23s. I forget how much is up front. I think 120 up front grains. So it's, it was a good combo. I've shot 3D with it before. Um, it was a good combo for Vegas. So we'll see. Let's go ahead and get outside. I got to get my 20 mark, which should be about where it's at right now. And then I'll get my 50 mark, go make a sight tape, and then maybe we'll shoot the course a little bit. This is Morel's new Mod Pro target, which is great for doing literally what we're doing right now, which is sight tapes and stuff, all these small, small targets. And then on this side, Velcro, that whole target comes off and they're pretty robust. I mean, they'll last a good while. Um, but these are little redding dots. So I love shooting at the redding dots for sighting in and stuff like this. Um, because you can see your dot really well and you got different sizes. So it's hard to find these redding dots anywhere. 19, 8, 20.3, 20. Okay. Right here. Be nice about a release, eh? Nice. Okay. Should be pretty close where this is, but I'm just gonna aim at the middle to be safe. Actually, my left and right might be off. I did mess with my top hats. Okay, a little left, a little high. My dot is blurry. I might have to change it. All right, I aimed at that dot, which is actually pretty good. Not bad. That's huge. Whenever I hold my release like this, I drop everything that I touch. I don't know why I do that. It's really important. I know I've said this so many times, but I'm going to get a quick and dirty sight tape and double check it like tomorrow or sometime this week. But it's really important to get your 20 yard mark dialed. It's very easy to be like, get a false sight tape like you're. Just just high every single time, and you're like, eh, we're good enough. It's at 20. It's only a half inch, but that half inch really does matter. I meant one of those small top ones. Okay, height's good. We're just left. I really don't care about left and rights. Get these in focus. Okay. We're gonna do that one more time just to make sure, but I feel like we are at a good spot. Not bad. It's like if I can get all of these arrows inside of that, which is about the 10 ring, I'll call it good. Oh. Why are you getting tired? <laughs> it's amazing. You don't shoot for a while and it's just like bleh. All right, if I hit the dot on this one, I'm calling it good. It'd help if I shot my bow more. Okay. So I think that's gonna be good for my 20, at least for now. Like I said, I'm gonna definitely double check it at a later time. So what I'm gonna do, so on this Excel site, I'm right at, I use this scale, so I'm at right at 41, like on the dot. Yeah, I might even just make it 41 exactly. So these top numbers, if you haven't used Excel, this is like the micro click. So it's a little line on the side and then zero, that'd be uh, 0 0.95, 0 0.9, 0.85. So put it right at zero, two clicks at this far is I gonna, I'd rather just make a whole number especially since I have to confirm that this is even going to work site tape wise. So 41, what I'll do quick and dirty is just take a photo of it too. Okay. Hey, I found a shed. Look at that. Big old buck, big old yard buck. Probably be the same next year though. 
This stand can get wrecked. I built it like out of some scrap wood a long time ago, and it is just battered and beaten down. So Goodbye. I just need one for this round one, but now I got a bunch of these. I have a bunch of these other ones, other targets now, which I think I'm gonna like better. It's a center punch, I think 65 or something, but they can stand on their own. Um, I think they're, they're cheaper than that feet of one is. Um, I think this outer foam is not as robust and sturdy, but I mean, when you're aiming at the center one, really you just have this outer piece uh, in case you miss sort of deal for that comfort. So I'm just gonna back this up because I know I can't quite get 50 yards from where I'm at, 48. Put it right next to Mr. Deer here. Let's see where this goes. Okay, not bad at all. I think I got a little wobble in my arrows. If you guys are watching at home thinking my bow is out of tune, it probably is out of tune. That That's the next step in this whole process. Should have been before, but here we are. Actually, that one looked good. Not bad at all. Whew, you probably see me just shaking away. That's tough. I got one flyer arrow that was a flyer last time too. I think something's wrong with it. Okay, I'm gonna try to shoot at the 12 on the deer for fun. Just high. I think I'm hanging a little high. Okay, we'll shoot one more time at 50. Um, Honestly, I might shoot all of these at the deer target. Sometimes like aiming at a blank spot on a deer. At least what I've noticed is like aiming at a target to aiming at a 3D target. I feel like your impact is just slightly, slightly different because you like aim a little differently based on aiming at an actual spec and then just aiming at nothingness and thinking where it is and then shooting and then like, the, oh yeah, I was aiming right there and my arrow hit. Sometimes that's better to get your, your 3D sight tape. Okay, so I feel like this, something's wrong with this arrow, I think. Because twice it hit super high. I'm just gonna spin the knock on it. See if that does anything. But that's not a bad group for 50 at first. I shot that one and that one a little high. So, I don't know. We're not out of the ball game per se. But we'll shoot one more time. That was low. And indeed it was low. That was that arrow again, it went high left. Felt good. Not bad. Okay, that's better. Okay, I got a decent group down there. They're just a touch left. But I think that is going to be my 50 mark. So I'm gonna do the same thing over again over here. We're dang near at 52. 52, okay, so we're gonna get this. I'll measure the distance and go get a sight tape. Okay, so I already know Something's wrong with this arrow because it has done that three times in a row now. And this is when I said I dropped my arm or whatever I did. Maybe. There we go. So those are my decent good shots. Okay. Not great. For a first preliminary sight tape to get done, is it okay? Yes. Yes. 
Okay, that should be it right there. Measure the two distances. I wonder if I can use a slider tape. No, I can technically. 20 and 50. 20 and 50. Probably. I'll take off 19. And then we know that our bow is set to, let me do this, hold on, hold on, hold on, I'm struggling. We know that our bow is set to 50 right now. So I'm gonna thread it. I gotta take these off, it's too thick. Okay, 50, 50, 50, 50. Perfecto. Now all I need to do is cut that little bit of access. So I don't need that much. Access. Access. What did I say? Access? Access. Access deer. Okay. We got our tape done, did it. It's getting dark on us, but uh I might shoot a couple targets in the darkness, just to see. 39.7, turn my light on, turn it down because it's getting dark. And I roughly know where the 12 is. Oh, look at that. Actually hit the 12. That's a miracle. 36.2. The Wolverine is a tough guy. I'm gonna aim for the upper 12. Oh, that's a close one too. We've been on a little roll here. Okay, now we're gonna shoot this dart pig. 47.72, it's a far one. 47.7. I'm just gonna hope to shoot a 10 on this, it's so dark. Cannot see the scoring rings. Indeed, a center 10, which is what I wanted. Okay, now let's go, we'll jump over to the right. We'll do the deer we were shooting at earlier, right at 50. How many, I got three arrows left. 50. Dude, that is very close to a 12 also, definitely a 10, but maybe right in the top of the 12. We're doing not that bad. This kind of gets me fired up about some 3D stuff. Okay, we will do the Cinnamon Bear 43.2. Little right. Yeah, still a 10, but right. I guess we gotta do, for our six one, we gotta do this deer behind the Mod Pro. I was thinking we had another one. 46.5. Oh, he shed his antler. <laughs> There we go. And I hit the upper 12, but I did not mean to do that. It's just getting so dark, can't see. Okay, let's go confirm a couple of those and see if Andrew can pull this arrow out. All right, Mr. Wolverine. Oh, I did call the upper. I was just out of it, just by a little bit. This one, I hit, nice. Right in the bottom of the 12 there. All right, try to pull this out. <laughs> I was gonna say it's tough. Oh, okay, you got it. <laughs> and this one, safe center 10. 
Yeah, this one's the easy one to pull. Center 10 is right there. These caravan antlers do not stay on. Worth a darn. Mr. Shed Buck. I wish I called the upper 12 because I would have hit it, but I didn't call it. So we're still technically up to, we're probably only going to be up to, I hit 10s on the rest. Center 10 on Mr. 50 yarder, 50 yard deer. <clears throat> and then the cinnamon bear. Cinnamon bear we did. Wow, it's tough to see that 12, just to the right, which I, I knew right when it broke, it was just right of the 12. Whatever, honestly, no eights, shot 112, two up for six arrows. I mean, it's not fantastic, but it's not bad for the first time. So 3D bow is like, I would say 40% set up. I don't know if these are the final arrows I'm gonna be shooting. Um, sight tape seems to be semi-close, but definitely gonna shoot these targets and then you know at the distances I was just shooting and keep bumping up and just keep shooting them at different distances to confirm uh, might play with my clarifier it's always good to like bump up and then bump down of where you're at right now just to kind of see how you, how it looks in comparison because sometimes it's like we don't even know if it could be a better or could be worse so it's good to know and other than that I just need to shoot a lot but I would love to do a couple ASAs this year so I guess this was the catalyst to get the bow set up in case I ever get a wild hair when I come out here and practice. But why would I ever do that? Maybe I will. All right, see you guys next time. Bye.